We are the ministry of the real truth. Shalom, shalom, peace be with you, peace be upon you, peace be upon all. In the abundant grace, mercy, love of the Most High God, Maria Allah, or Master God, and His Son, Ishwa Bashika, or Jesus the Christ, Jesus the Messiah, bless you all. We have of late spent time watching and listening to Dr. Emmett Hillman, who has made claims that according to Greek scriptures, writings or texts, that are untranslated by anyone, which he professes to have in his possession, and only he has translated it. He's the first to translate it. And he has made claims that according to these texts, Jesus the Christ was really an undercover drug trafficker, molester, hung out with 10-year-old boys who had beards, go figure, and so forth. We have watched several of his videos, interviews, etc. We even tried to find his book and download it, to have a look at it, to have a better understanding of it, called Chemical Muse, which is a pen name he uses among others, like Lady Babylon and so forth. We tried to find this online, we eventually did, but it was limited to, get this, the sight impaired, for some uncanny reason. Okay, so these people can't read it, but they, obviously there's some sort of text reader that helps them, it reads it for them. Okay, that was really uncanny. Two copies of it, in this, limited to these sight impaired. But we will continue to strive to find that book and bring you a video on it. We came across this particular video that we're looking at at the moment, the beginning Satanic Initiation Season 1, Episode 1 online, but our machine played up. Our sound just decided to crackle and carry on, and we tried to work it out. We realized it's probably the free pre-installed GNC View webcam software on it, running in the background, so we shut that down and put Voco Screen NG on there, and so far so good, no crackling problems or anything like that because people did inform us. Well, we can't really hear what you're saying because your you, thing's crackling. Okay. Took us a while to figure it out. But we did it. And hopefully it's all, all is good now. No problems. So we're going to look at this particular video by M1 Hillman, aka Lady Babylon, The Chemical Muse, etc. Warning, warning, be prepared. You as a Christian, if you're a Christian, a believer in the one true God and his son Jesus the Christ, Jesus the Messiah, you might be shocked, or you will be shocked, immensely at what the doctor has to say, what comes out of his mouth, right? We believe his claims, his rants are blasphemic, full of utter nonsense. That's what blasphemy means. Uh, in the Galilean Aramaic translated into English. But before we point and judge with a pointy judgy finger, let's strive to watch, listen, hear and then do the necessary research the investigative journalism on Dr. Emmett Hillman. It's just fear, isn't it? We have put Okay, it's a rather lengthy but very informative comments under his videos, it's other videos and our videos, but they give you deep insights into what he's really all about. Where he makes statements claiming something about something being in the Bible, as we've for mentioned that Jesus was a drug trafficker, had these young teen year old boys as his children following him around that is a all this sort of stuff. He says it, it's in the scriptures or in the Greek texts. So we will compare it to both the original ancient Tab Asherit or Aramaic Old Testament in the sacred scribal language of God, the Lishana Tikkas of Prayer, translated into the nearest English equivalent along with the Galilean Aramaic New Testament manuscripts, also translated into the nearest English equivalent. These were of the, they were hidden and preserved by the original ancient very old apostolic church of the east which Thomas found and then handed over those particular writings or those manuscripts 
uh, to this church of the East that he founded, to the high priest, etc., who then hid them from Constantine, therefore preserving them for over 2,000 years, as testified by the once head patriarchate, Victor N. Alexander, the translator, and uh, Andrew Gabriel Roth, the Messianic Jew, who translated the original, ancient, very old Syriac, uh, Eastern Syriac Peshitta into the nearest English equivalent from that same church, the Episcopal Church of the East. We also will compare the verses that he quotes, if he quotes any in this particular video, or in further videos, of the modern Americanized English modern Bible translations of today. For example, the King James Version, New King James Version, Revised Standard Version, Berean Bible, etc. Okay, we're working from our notes on Ammon's video. We pre-watched it, of what he has said word for word. Later, we will strive to find any books, etc. he names, and bring you videos on those he references from, and so forth. We'll ad lib, meaning we'll add commentary where necessary, where we feel it is really needed. Note, we have clicked on the subtitle options here, so you can hear and read along. There might be some words that he says he might mumble or you get confused with. It's just easier. But subtitles are not always correct. But you can handle that. Okay, so yeah, so we've clicked on the subtitles option below the video so you can read along as he speaks. The first 34 seconds of the video has no sound and images. So we thought, oh, okay, online when we were listening to, oh no, the whole thing is one of these silly videos where there's no sound, right? So we thought, well, we might get a copyright strike or a copyright claim because there's no international uh, copyright license 4.0 or whatever there okay no indication of that through the icons so i thought well we go watch it on uh, youtube it shouldn't be so bad right um shouldn't generate any copyright strikes or claims or whatever okay yeah the first 34 seconds of this video has no sound only images then you see the title lady of babylon so we'll play it so you can see that that would be verified Okay, about 35 seconds into it, there's no sound. And then suddenly there's sound, then there's not sound, then there's good sound, right? This is images, different creatures, uh, volcanoes, supposed Greek text. Some statues of snakes. Uh, somebody with a little child. And here's the title, Lady Babylon. That's one of the pen names he goes under. And then it comes up with Satanic Initiation. Why is that? A okay, picture of him with a snake wrapped around his faces. And then he begins. Well, you got me to come back. And I appreciate it. Because here and now, on this Sabbath, we can finally be in a place where we can find... Okay, so when you say Sabbath, he's not saying Shabbat or Shabbat or anything Jewish. It may appear that. So could it be Sabbat, like a black Sabbat, you know, to do a satanic church with a cult or something like that? We'll leave that up to you to decide. Okay, so basically we're asking why are all those satanic references displayed? Is he simply trying to get a response from God-believing Christians? You know, they'll come at him and give him a hundred scriptures and all that sort of stuff. Is that what he's wanting? Function freely. And we can find that thing called the unassailable freedom. Okay, so, so what does unassailable mean? We went online to find out what that means. Did you notice that there's a hoot of an owl? Okay, is that a Freemasonic owl? Is he doing it on purpose? What's the explanation for that sudden owl noise? Right, some sort of secret wisdom, some sort of awakener. Okay, then we see Amon Hillman, aka the Lady of Babylon, who proceeds to tell us on this Sabbat. 
Notice he didn't say Shabbat or Shabbat, the Hebrew for the Sabbath or even Sabbath in English. Is this a satanic occult or church's black Sabbath? Something, some ritual they do? Yeah, satanic style ritual they celebrate. He's probably talking to his viewers uh, when this was running live. And he states, you can be, finally be in a place, or well, his listeners, where they can find, or they can function freely, and they can find that thing called the unsaleable freedom, or unsaleable freedom. So we went online to find out what does that mean, and got to find, and one, it means not liable, to doubt, attack, or question. Two, in such a strong position that you cannot be defeated. In other words, he can't be defeated from you know what he says or that sort of stuff. You can't defeat him because it's like there, that truth that he shows is there. Impossible to doubt or argue with, or impossible to attack because he presents you that supposedly. Uh, ancient text untranslated from antiquity etc etc three not able to attack you can't attack it it can't be attacked or denied you can't say no that's a lot of rubbish so what is Hillman saying we began to think we began to ponder hmm a possible reason why he said this as Christians may be well aware there is a high rampant, rampant amount of Gnostic Gnostic information Mythical claims of scripture saying this and that on YouTube by highly qualified experts, ex Christians, deformed Christians. Whoops, uh, we mean disconstructed or deconstructed Christians, etc. From top theologians brought onto the show as guests, like the get this agnostic atheist. He doesn't believe in God, but he believes that Jesus was a real person. Okay? But not the Jesus that all the Christians venerate today. That's what he's stating. But the Ehrman. Therefore, there's so much blasphemy, total nonsense being pushed as the truth by ex-Christians, or deconstructed Christians and atheists and these atheist experts, etc., invited onto their shows. Okay, so, Christians, we're going to ask you, what then are these peoples? According to scripture, children of the devil, liars, etc. Yeah, it's in the book of James, we believe, or 1 John, 3 7, something like that. Okay, so is M1 Human the new guru? I'm going to continue with this video. My job tonight, since you've given me your time and attention, is to bring you the things that you haven't seen or heard. My job is to show you how to have ears to hear. Okay, we got a comment from somebody else. We recent, uh, just recently blocked. Uh, and they said, well, you don't put off that stuff anymore. If you want to argue with us, argue with us for a while. We'll bring you the truth. And then if you just want to keep arguing for the sake of it, well, after a while, don't argue with those who want to argue all that sort of scriptural stuff. So we just, yeah, bye-bye. Block it, right? Not being mean or anything, it's just, yeah, get to a point and that's it. Okay. Enough's enough. Um, so is M1 Hillman the new guru? Let's be fair, prove or disprove, he is over time with biblical scripture, ancient history, world history, etc. To us, he is telling all, this is what we believe, that he's telling it all, that with his his untranslated Greek text that he possesses and that he has translated he even tells you on this video that he's translated them he's bringing them to you or to the audience he and the devil perhaps can totally crush the belief in God Jesus Christ right Christianity once and for all because there's all these people out there that are trying hard to do that people have come across us in social chat and all that sort of stuff we've talked to them and they've said oh, Christianity's on the way out uh, it's going to be all gone soon uh, all this sort of stuff right but it's still up and running okay 
are still around like God said you know or Jesus said you know, that it, it'll never end right no one will be able to get rid of it it'll be there forever okay because many have come up come to us blaspheming blaspheming saying a whole lot of nonsense saying Christianity is on the way out no it's still alive and kicking and if you did manage to kill it somehow yeah, forever then you'd have to deal with Judaism and Islam extremist Islam and do exactly the same the trouble with extremist Islam is they don't give a stuff who you are that you know this, you know that, that you, yeah, an atheist, uh, agnostic, whatever, they're going to chop your head off. Because if you refuse to believe in their one God, their monotheistic God, Allah, or Allah, right, and their one prophet, Muhammad, up goes your head, right, okay, and throw rocks at you, put, put you in the dirt, up to your head and throw rocks at you and all that sort of stuff. Acid hankies at your face, right, they don't give us stuff. This human. <laughs> got to continue watching this video. I'm here to profane the mystery. That is. What did he say? He's here to profane the mystery, like undermine it, give it crap, right? Etc. Etc. Right? Make a dung pile of it, etc. Etc. How we define that word profane, right? He continues saying his job, as you just heard, is to bring you all the things that you haven't seen or heard. His job is to show you how to have ears to hear. He is here, within the video, to profane the mystery. The mystery about... I'm here to make it clear to you so that you may enter into contract with wait for that one wait for that one okay so he's saying he's come to fathom uh, he's come to profane the mystery not the mysteries your Gnostic mysteries all that magical Gnostic stuff it doesn't sound like he's going to touch on that right he's talking about the Christ the God the Christ etc all that that you know you haven't yet known etc etc it's all re evolve, revolving around God and Jesus, right? In that Christian religion. Lucifer. What did he say? Star. He said, he, he, he's bringing you something. Hang on. I'll go back a bit. And it's my... To put you in that time machine, to stuff you in that time machine, and to take you back to the place... Okay, I'm going to go back where this was... So you can hear it properly. Okay, can get back to here. Make it clear to you so that you may enter into contract with ooh, 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 ooh. Lucifer. Contract with Lucifer, the, the devil. Star. That contract is an exchange. Esoteric understanding of the universe for your soul it's very simple you must be born again and it's my job to put you in that time machine to stuff you in that time machine and to take you back to the place where this was all done I need you to be able to taste the dust I need you to, to smell the funk so okay. I need to be able to take you places that... Okay, so what did he just say? He said it's his job to bring you all the things that you haven't seen or heard. His job is to show you how to have ears to hear. Okay, so this person in this comment to us said, oh, or, or it's not for you to reason, etc., because uh, you don't have the ears to hear all this sort of stuff, right? So none of those secrets are going to be revealed to you. But we know from the original Aramaic... Galilean Aramaic New Testament 
translated into New Sing's equivalent, that Jesus was speaking to his disciples on the mount. Not us, not anyone else, specifically them. Because they asked him a question, uh, Master or Lord, why do you continually speak in parables? And he gave them the reason, right? To you are revealed the secrets of the kingdom of God. Because they're going to be like the ones up there probably on special seats or that sort of stuff. Yeah, judge probably to judge the twelve tribes of Israel, the descendants of them that believed, and all these other people, you know, millions and millions of uh, believers from different nations, non-Jewish nations, right? They, they'll be appointed because like, they asked them, "Oh, who's going to be the the man up in uh, in heaven? You know, who's going to be important? All this sort of stuff." And he says, "You know, there'll be judges over the nations and the twelve tribes of Israel, all that sort of scriptural stuff, right?" Okay, go check out those scriptures on it. We don't want to put you wrong. Okay, so he's not here to profane the Gnostic mysteries. He's here to profane the mystery, okay, in relation to God, the Christ, and Christianity. Right? That is, he is here to make it clear to you that you may now rewind this. Uh, yeah, yeah, rewind it. You hear it again. No. <laughs> okay, rewind this video. Go go back to where he says into a contract with Lucifer who is the devil the devil right the morning star well we actually think he's according to scripture he's actually the day star because maybe that program you know, day star <laughs> is actually uh, antichrist this satan you know this it's just the place that you can sell your book. You can talk a whole lot of rubbish. And so, oh, maybe that's the other one. Supernatural, it's supernatural, it's supernatural. Or something like that. But yeah, just to sort of we figured out. Yeah, because there's a lot of rubbish on there. Yeah, so Daystar could be the name of it, but really it's Lucifer, right? Check out the scriptures. Yeah, don't want to put you wrong. Okay, that contract is an exchange. This is what he said, not what we're saying. It's an exchange. What's an exchange? It's a trade. It's a swap. It's a selling of. Okay? Or you're bartering something in exchange for something else, right? It's an exchange. It's an esoteric, which means... And what does esoteric mean when it's defined? Understanding of the universe for your soul. An exchange, a trade, a swap, or payment... You're allowing it to be bought through that contract. You've sold it to the devil. You sold your soul to the devil in exchange for all this other insight, etc. Okay? He then says that you must be born again. It's a twisting of scripture, right? He's not saying you must be like born again, born from above, born from the head, become Christ like, you know, renewed in mindset, become a new be filled and led by the Holy Spirit. He's not saying it. Okay, he's saying something completely different. Okay, and it's his job to put you in that or a time machine to stuff you into it and take you back where this was all done before, right? Previously done. He wants you to be able to taste the dust. What's that? Earth, the soil, the ground that you came from, maybe. Okay, Adam came from Eve. Adam came from uh, created by God. To smell the funk. What the hell is that? As far as we know, funk is one of those black styles of music, right? James Brown and... Uh, what's the other one? Bootsy Collins and all that, right? In the 70s. Okay. What's that supposed to mean? Okay, so they're going to continue. Honestly, other people don't want to go or can't go. So what's he saying there? Okay, on this time machine voyage... If you're selling your or contracting your soul out to Lucifer, you might be kind of a person like Christian or whatever that doesn't want to get involved in that. You don't want to go on that trip with them or whatever, you know. Well, you can't because, again, you're a Christian. Okay. And you're very reserved because of what you've been taught in your church, your Bible, whatever. Right? The first principle I'd like to convey to you, anyone who appears with me, will appear with a head shaved in mourning. Okay, so woman, if you go with him on this trip, right, this time machine, you're going to get a baldy head like him, right? You're going to shave your hair off. You can come out the other side with a bald head. It's not a 
metaphorical, allegorical statement. Okay, he's practically saying you're going to come out of the other end with a bald head. You're going to shave your head off, or your head off, your hair off. Right? Get a uh, what's your name? Sinead O'Connor. We are in mourning. They're in mourning, right? Go, go, one eye. You what's died. What's that? I smell. It's the death of Get this kicker, right? This is what he's practically saying is blasphemy, right? Let's just go back a little bit. This is blasphemy, man. Honestly, other people don't want to go or can't go. The first principle I'd like to convey to you, anyone who appears with me will appear with a head shaved in mourning. She we in are morning. in mourning. Yeah. Who died? What's that I smell? It's the death of Jehovah. So he's saying to you all out there, you Christians, God is going to die. God's dead. I can smell him. He's dead. Death has come to God. That's what he's saying. It's the end of God. I am going to show you what Otto Kern discovered. Otto. Okay, that'll be Otto Kern. Probably O double T O K E R N. We thought it was Udo Kerr, the actor that was on uh, Blade, one of those vampires that got destroyed by uh, that character of Stephen Dorff's. Yeah, we to get rid of the old vampires. We thought it was him, but no, it's Otto Kern. Otto Kern was a German classical philologist in the early 20th century. And Otto Kern said, there is something being used in antiquity. This cult language, we'll call it the Orthic Vox. The did he just say Orthic Vox or Ortho Vox? I know he, he didn't say Orthodox. So yeah, it's either Ortho Vox or Orthic Vox. They are hiding the mystery within the Vox. It's a language within a language. It so what he's trying to say there is the mystery. You know, he's hiding the truth of uh, what's really behind God, the Jesus, biblical accounts, etc. Right? That you're being lied to, basically. There's something they're hiding from you. Okay. These religions are hiding. They got this. Uh, pretense, okay, they're making it oh, Jesus was this, Jesus was that but behind the scenes really, it's all coded encrypted and stuff, and it's really saying something completely different and these, this source has the truth okay, of what it's really about, that's what he's saying it's what the Pythagoreans call the Upsilon, so now he's going into uh, Greek philosophers, okay, like Pythagoras, etc., and saying, "Well, you know, this is what they saw. They weren't Christians. They weren't church fathers. Yeah, they were just ordinary philosophers, Greek philosophers, who had this ideology or this theory that he's pushing." The left-handed and the right-handed path. You can read any text, but if you read a text that is encrypted with the Orphic Vox. Now, how are you going to know that? Okay, how are you going to realize that? Oh, oh, he's going to teach you that, right? Yeah, he's going to reveal it to you if you come on his side, right? You can read a text that only is only for those with ears to hear. Okay, so he's twisted the scriptures again. Okay, he's taking what Christ did to his disciples. Yeah, those who have ears hear, but they're not really listening or that sort of stuff, right? Yeah, that's the expression for those of you who have ears to hear. And that's my goal tonight, is to give you those ears to hear. And I'm going to do that very simply by just transporting us back. I'm going to show you a never-before-read text. This thing has never been translated into English. Here you go. It's never been seen before. It's never been translated or 
it's never been read and translated only he has it and only he is the one that's able to translate it into English nobody else I'll tell you how we found it and I'll translate it for you and you will be in a place that you, only you who are sitting as initiates are able to come to okay initiates means that you're you know you're going to get into this contract you're going to get on this guy's side to the uh, to understand these mystery the mystery with the mysteries right you have to come on his side, be on his team to learn that. Maybe attend the class or you know whatever he's giving to you as an initiate. Initiate, a new member, right? Initiate, initiate. Hail Satan! There he goes. Hail Satan! So what does that tell you, Christians? This guy's of the devil. He's satanic. What believer in God would be saying Hail Satan? It's insane, right? Look at his background. Is this a picture of somebody or something? Pagan in the background? We don't know. We're not going to say it is. We don't know. It's probably just a picture of some lady, like, you know, sounds of music, sound of music, who dancing around in the grass or something. We don't know. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see what all this is. Maybe that's, this is his kitchen, so it might be just cooking stuff, right? Okay, cookbooks and whatever. Some CDs, maybe. That looks like CDs. Okay, you going to continue? Before we begin, I'd like to consult with your voice during this process I know that you are serious and I know you want you don't want the theories look I've been watching you you don't want the theories you don't want the professors and the academics to come out and to tell you their theory that they somehow created in the midst of some cognitive circle jerkery you don't want that you want the actuality. It turns out the actuality, the historical reality is far more interesting than the drama that you hear and reject instinctively. You reject it. I know you do. Yeah. Children, children need to come as children. Yeah? Okay. For the first time, we're going to look on this material. And it's good. Does he mean come as children, like, theoretically uh, or practically, as he made accusations against the Christ, Jesus the Christ, uh, and his disciples, as the disciples being his children, young boys, 10 years old, with beards, going figure, etc., that he was molesting. He called them their children for that reason, because they were like children. They were children to him, right? His children. His special children, etc., etc. So is he dropping the same hint? We don't know. We wouldn't say he is, but how do you know? It's going to blow some minds of the way that people think. But I'm going to ground you in a time and a place where you'll never forget it. And it'll make its mark on you. I'm using the images now of the mystery yeah. There it is again. The mystery, not the mysteries of the Gnostics. The Gnostic mysteries. All these mystical mysteries. Okay, he's specifically talking about God and Jesus. Okay? And the disciples in the Christian scriptures. Yeah? Trust us on that. Yeah. Okay. So, we're going to learn how to read some Orphic Greek. And, and uh, we're going to break the seal. We're going to break the seal. And just by way to shock somebody into their senses who's going to start watching this and participating, if you've come to this classroom, realize you don't know anything. You have not read the Bible. Don't say that you have. Don't try to quote it. You don't know what it is. You haven't seen it. You haven't read it. That's what I tell all the seminarian students that I have. So what do, what have we read? What do we read? If it's not the Bible, a collection of books, uh, the Old Testament, the Old, New Testament scriptures, then what is it? Is it a cookbook? Is it a TV guide? No. 
Yeah. And they realize that I'm telling them the truth. You haven't read it. Don't tell me you have. Don't tell me you have if you've gone to church. Don't tell me you have if you know King James and the smell of his underwear. I don't care. You haven't read it if you have. He's talking about the Greek. The Greek translations. Haven't gone in the Greek. And I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about Bible college. And I am not talking about seminaries. Because. I mean, you need to swim in the depths of the Greek. And that's what I'm going to do for you tonight. I'm going to bridge that gap. So you need to swim in the depth of the Greek. So who's he talking about? Greek philosophers, philanthropists, uh, philologists, all those different people like that. Okay. Socrates, Plato, uh, etc., etc., who he recommends. They're not men of God. They're just ordinary Greek philosophers, etc., etc. Because I can do that. And here's a wonderful opportunity for instead of me trying to sell you something, by the way, that's the test. Nobody gets in the door who sells stuff. Okay, so is this class free? Or did you have to pay money for it? Because if it's not free and you have to pay money for it, then he's selling you something, isn't he? Right? There's no sales here. You can't profit. I don't want your super chats. Okay? I don't want them. I'm going to keep tabs on what you're saying. I got a watchdog here who's keeping tabs on what you're saying. And when you say something relevant, she is going to bark. Okay. What he's referring to there is being a live show and an open chat. If you say something different or against what, you know, mentioned the Bible or something like that that person's going to snap at you probably block you kick you out or time you out that's what he's talking about when she barks okay she's going to probably tell you off right and then put you in time out which often can be unfair especially in the case of a female you know like the ones that we were on sunday the tv this one female we're not too sure if it's his wife but she kept blocking all the males kicking them out putting them in time out for no valid reason okay one time we spent the whole, what was it, about three hour show stuck in time out, okay, for something trivial. We just asked the question, oh, time out for you, for three hours? That's unfair, right? Right. Okay, so I'm excited and I appreciate the fact that you, that everybody has been so supportive. Um, Hail Satan. You know, there he goes with the hell of Satan's again. Let's just let's just jump in and and see what we can do here. Do we have anything in the chat? Because it would be good. I think he's any asking comments his moderator. Here that we need to he might be asking his moderator. Consider. Why don't you just go ahead and read it? Bark it out. Go ahead. We'll get our format down. Let's get that snake bite. We got snake. We got John's apocalypse. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. I see where you are. You're hungry. You're hungry. Feed them. They're hungry. I'll feed them. I apologize. Let's proceed. Let's put ourselves in the time machine. Close the door. Everybody's in. We're good. We're locking down. We're going. We've got a document because we're necromancers. We're going to use human. You hear it? You see, he's a necromancer. Thought is our wave. We've got a document from antiquity that we can... Okay, now look at this, examine it, listen to what he has to say very, very closely with both ears open, right? Say a few things about its date. We know that it's preserved by one of the early imperial physicians. Yeah, and we know that it's uh, addressed to Nero in a funny kind of way. It puts Nero in the place of the divinity that you are implicating. So what's he saying there? Okay. It's putting Nero as the god or a god in place of almighty god. Okay. It's replacing him. That's what the Romans did in those days, especially Nero. Because what we've found through our own personal research 
is that the Roman senators, okay, they decreed, they made a law, they decreed to emperors, you are a god, you are born of the gods, you are divine. Now you have to believe it and act like you are. You go around saying, I'm divine, you know, bow down to me, all this sort of stuff. Okay, because we decreed it. So, uh, Roman emperors like Augustus Caesar, Caligula, and those after him all did that. Right? You go look at, okay, it's a bit raunchy. Bob Guccione's uh, Caligula, yeah, he says, yeah, I'm a god. And all this sort of stuff, right? Okay? The only one that didn't do it, that we've found through our personal research, but did we come across something not so long ago that says, no, nah, no, nah. it's a Christian booklet that says none of them uh, in their day were presented God and believed all this stuff. Rubbish. Yeah, it's total rubbish. Because according to the histories, Tiberius, known as the Ugly Emperor, because he had something wrong with his face, so the people used to whisper when he goes past, oh, what an ugly guy, you know? Oh, what the hell's that on his face? So they nicknamed him the Ugly Emperor behind his back. He, during his reign was told by the senators, these Roman senators, or senate, uh, you are divine, you have to believe that you are divine, you are born divine, and to walk around telling everybody that you are, and act as you are, right? Statues be made, all that sort of stuff, people have to venerate it, you know, bow down to it, pay you homage or whatever, and if they don't, they get punished, and he says, no, get stuffed, because I am a normal man, a human being like everybody else out there, every other man out there, we're just men, we're not gods, so no, I'm not doing that crap. So maybe he stepped down for a while. We was forced to step down, All right? And then he walked around doing his thing, and he came across people preaching about the Christ, and he questioned it. So maybe he was going to take it on board, but he comes back, and then the Roman says, "Hey, hey, hey, you can't talk about. It. We don't want that here, you know? Okay, we have our own gods with that sort of stuff. This is just an example, right? It may not have happened exactly like that, but." They said, no, 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 we, we don't want any of that in our courts, right? With that sort of stuff. And then he ends up supposedly getting murdered by Caligula. That's how he, you know, he was like an adopted uh, uncle or something like to him. Um, yeah, he had him murdered, and then he had the guy, his loyal guard or friend or whatever he was, murdered <laughs> when he implicated him on that, right? To somebody else. Okay, you have to watch that Bob Guccione movie, which supposedly is the most accurate historically to what the Romans actually did in those days. Okay? So he continues with his rant. We're going to continue yeah. listening to him. Now, who's going to know this? Nobody. Nobody is going to know this. You can take the documents that I show you, you can take them to a classicist, you can force them to read them to you. Yeah. But nobody studies this. Nobody. Why, why am I studying this, or why am I bringing it to you? Because the muse told me to. And Did you hear that? He said a muse told him to. What's a muse? Yeah, go get that word defined. Yeah? He said he's bringing it to all because a muse told him to. She revealed it and told him to. And supposedly it's in Greek from a uh, physician in the courts of Nero in the Roman courts, and it was addressed to Emperor Nero. But get this. Because she very intelligently led me into right into this pathway. Ancient pharmacology. Oh. Yeah, so he goes, gets into that, gets all highly qualified, all that sort of stuff. Comes out, recognized all that sort of stuff. Yeah, fair enough. Oh, we have this great text. So we have this great text. Go ahead and bring up. It's number three there. Bring that up on you. Yes. Here you go. Oh, it's... Here's the Greek, right? He's got, maybe he's moderated to bring it up. So we are saying to someone out there who's a native-born Greek, that's fluent in the Greek, the modern Greek, This I don't think this would be the original ancient Koine Greek, long dead, no longer spoken or written uh, Koine Greek. It would be a mod modern version, vernacular. If you can look at this and tell us what this means, okay, a fluent, a native fluent Greek, speaker, natural speaker, not one who's gone to a seminar, Bible college, or paid for a course online to learn modern Greek, okay? We need it from a native-born Greek, a fluent Greek speaker, 
Okay, if you can help like that, subscribe to our channel. Uh, give us a like, subscribe to our channel, add your comments below telling us all about it. What does it actually say? Okay, because this guy could be another Joseph Smith saying, Oh, yeah, 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 I know what, yeah, this is the only text, the text that only I have, nobody else has, no one's translated it ever. I'm the first, it could be totally fake. Okay, like his was, apparently. Right. Oh, yeah, he's got this Egyptian scroll uh, found in the tomb of Egypt when it was all rubbish, and he's the only one in America that could translate it. But others you know, worked on it and figured it out. It was a whole lot of rubbish. It was the Carnival Act, right? It's all rubbish. Yeah, so if you can translate that for us, that would be great. And look, what is this thing? Can I just tell you what this thing is? Here we go. We're almost there. The world has almost changed. Let's give it one more 30 second interval. Um, it's repeating cycles. Anyway. Um, look at this, people. Look at this. Bring up the, bring up the score here. Oh my God. Andromachu, feriake, dia ehidnon. Oh my God. He, kalomene, kalene. Oh my God. You know what that is? This is the feriac. This is the beast. Theriac is the beast. Look at you, grubby. Okay, so he says nobody knows this. What this is. Nobody knows within his uh, audience what Theriac means. Okay, here it says Syriac. So we thought it was a Syriac, but then we thought, no, he, he said further on, uh, further back at first, Theriac. So we tried to spell it. Okay, we're using these subtitles or ignored it or something, didn't really look at it. And we tried to go find it online, right? And we went to a certain website okay, to get it defined and it gave us this answer because we thought it said he said etheriac the way he said it right what is it and it said wow what an interesting question after conducting some research I found that etheriac doesn't seem to be a widely recognized or established term in any specific field or domain it's possible that it's a misspelling a made up word or a term that's specific to a particular community or group. Could you please provide more context or information about where you encountered this term? This might help me better understand your question and provide a more accurate response. Okay. And uh, we're saying, well, what would be the closest to the word we're trying to define? To define? Uh, and then we found out what it was through his, uh, through the subtitles, right? And we went back and we said, okay, it's Theriac. Okay. And our reply was, oh, it was close, but I didn't quite prescribe the correct answer earlier. Theriac is a word that refers to a type of medicine or treatment that was commonly used in the past, especially in ancient Greece and Rome. A Theriac was a complex concoction of ingredients, often including opium, myrrh, and other substances which was believed to have medicinal properties and was used to treat a wide range of ailments. This term, theriac, is derived from the Greek word theriacon, okay, which would be a loan word if the Romans borrowed it. It's a Greek loan word, which means antidote or remedy. In modern times, the term is mostly used in historical or literary context to refer to this type of ancient medicine. It's a medicine, and this certain person was glad that they were able to diagnose the correct answer for us, and we are truly grateful for that. So, it's a mixture, it's a opium, a drug, and a common known drug today, myrrh, which is like, you know, the spices that the uh, three wise men from Persia uh, brought with them, and you now for the, the baby Jesus, and other substances, not named here, okay? So it's a mixture of some natural herbal ointment and a drug. Okay? So in that way, this guy is correct, saying, you know, they had drugs in the Roman and Greek, day, Greek days, right? Opium, etc., etc. Right? Okay? And he's saying it's the beast. And we were like, hey? So continue? A little... 
You so you love it. You got the beast right up front, right in your face. This is the beast. It's called a theriac. Does anybody know what a theriac is? So he just says the beast. We we went on line and found that it means a concoction of medicines, drugs, right? Does anybody know what a theriac is? Nobody in the audience. Nobody knows that. yet what a theriac is, or they're not fast enough to type. So what is it? It's the word for for a serpent or beast or a wild, uh, dangerous thing. We, okay, so our source that we asked said something completely different. It's a Greek word from therakion. It could be a, a, a different word, a similar word, right? So it could have a different meaning, which means antidote or remedy. It doesn't say serpent or beast there, right? Okay. So where's he getting that from? Obviously, this would be uh, modern Greek and modern vernacular. It wouldn't be the original ancient long dead, no longer written or used according to Greek, wouldn't it? It's not that right. Okay, so if he's saying that it's the beast, the serpent, whatever, then this source is either lying or and got it wrong, or he's lying, he's got it wrong. Okay. So if he's saying the serpent or beast, we we're thinking about it, thinking, 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 and then we thought, ah, the Book of Revelations. Okay, you haven't seen this before. He probably hasn't either. Okay, Revelation chapter 13, and this is St. John's vision when he's on the island of Patmos. Okay, exiled there for his belief in Yeshua Mashiach or Jesus the Messiah. Okay, getting punished for that, put in exile. And he's probably well, his youngest of all the disciples, apparently. No, he wasn't 10. Okay, at this point, he was probably about 80 or something like that. He died around when he's about 100 years old, apparently. So he would have been quite young under the cross, probably. Um, 20s or something like that yeah yeah something like that revelations chapter 3 from the original ancient galilean aramaic manuscriptures new testament manuscriptures that were hidden from emperor constantine therefore preserved for over 2000 years by the apostolic church of the east which thomas with the help of Bartholomew, thaddeus peter and mary of the 70 founded okay and then they chained these high priests and all that Christ had told them and taught them, this is how the church should operate, this is what it should do to run you know, over the centuries, and then they passed it on to the next priest, and they passed it on to the next ones, and they'll be doing it for what, 18 centuries or whatever, exactly the same thing, according to what they were first instructed by those disciples, etc. Right? Okay? We've always done it like that. If you don't believe us, go and ask a high priest of the reformed with the restored apostolic church of the east and they'll tell you pretty much the same thing okay that we've just revealed to you okay so it reads and the dragon who's the dragon the serpent the snake that reptilian the devil okay stood on the sand of the sea okay so there's a great ocean and some sand okay so what it means symbolically is that the seas are people, right? And the sand is probably where they're located, or that there's so many of them that you just can't count them, right? Okay. And John saw that demon, and there's a footnote indicator there. We're going to have a look at that. Footnotes. Literal Aramaic idiom or expression, inhuman, inhuman creature, or anti-man. It hates man. It really hates him, right? So that would probably be the devil or one of his minions, right? We say the devil rising out of the sea from amongst those people, amongst uh, that mass of people, a nation, right? That has ten horns, because here it is here. That has ten horns and seven heads, and on its heads are the names of blasphemies or nonsense, utter crap, right? Coming out of their mouth, load of rubbish, right? And the demon that John saw resembled, he looked like, he was similar to. A tiger, but doesn't mean it was a tiger. Okay, similar to a tiger, and his feet, his feet, were like those of a bear, and his mouth was like the mouth of lions, you know, roaring constantly. Oh, this is a, and the dragon or the devil, that serpent, that old 
serpent known as the devil, gave his power and his throne and great authority. So his kingdom, his throne, his authority, etc., his power were behind it. Okay, they were of him. And one of its heads, many branches, right, or states, as though cut and dying. Okay, it's number three down here. Little Aramaic idiomatic expression, cut to death. Okay, so it was wounded, near destroyed, but it was hanging off for dear life, and it came back. Okay, and one of its heads, as though cut and dying, and from under its own death, it pulled through. Okay, so it pulled through, it recovered. And the whole world, that means the world at the time that was known, not uh, Australia, Fiji, or Channel Islands, or anything like that, right? I guess that's got a footnote indicator in the bottom there. Okay, so from it, put it you know, it's like a snake with many heads, right? You cut one off, another one grows in its place. It's like that, okay? So, literal Aramaic idiomatic expression, it pushed up. Uh, it's like a, uh, an insect, let's say a cicada or something like that, it sheds that skin and underneath is this uh, insect, right? Okay. It's become, uh, it's resurrected again. Okay. Basically. It just it had a near death experience. Yeah. Literal Aramaic idiom, earth. Okay. Uh, where are we? Okay. And one of its heads is though cut and dying, and from under its own death it pulled through or recovered. And the whole world, the earth, was enthralled in the wake of that demon. So they were all excited, right? Yeah, here we that one. Little Aramaic idiomatic construction was amazement, or amazed, after the inhuman creature. Yeah. Yeah. It's anti-man. This demon is anti-man. The one that hated man, right? And he was given a mouth. Well, maybe in that sense it means this particular person had disdain. He had no time for other beings, right? Other human beings. He couldn't stand them. He hated them. Something like that. And his he was given a mouth to utter abominations. These are blasphemies. Okay. Down here, five. Literal Aramaic idiom or expression, nonsense. Yeah, took a whole lot of rubbish, and this was during the ministry of Jesus, when he was doing his ministry for the three years with his disciples, right? Yeah, while he was doing that, this guy was mouthing off, talking blasphemies. Okay, he was given a mouth to utter abominations or talk a whole lot of blasphemies, a whole lot of nonsense, and blasphemies, and he was given authority to do so for forty-two months. Yeah, footnote indicator. During the ministry of Jesus, so that's two and a half to three years, right? Because they have do have month differences and all that sort of stuff, year differences. They're not like ours, you know, twelve months. They might have had, at that time they could have had thirteen months, fourteen months. And then you know, like they had thirteen days or something like that, and they cut it down to seven and all this sort of stuff. So basically it says there in these scriptures that he was given a mouth to utter abominations or nonsense and he was given authority to do so for 42 months during Jesus' ministry. And he opened his mouth to blaspheme against Allah or God, to blaspheme against his name or his title or his name and his abode where he is, reigns, kingdom of heaven and against those who dwell in heaven. Okay. All that was related to God, he blasphemed him against him. How did he blaspheme him against him? By saying, according to the Roman Senate, pushing, you are emperor, you are a god, with a little cheek. You are all powerful, you are divine. You, know, you must go around pretending to be that, act like that, that, saying that, that you are divine, that you are god, and everybody has to worship you. Okay, All your subjects, if they don't, they get punished. Okay, they see an image of you, they have to bow down to it. Or pay it homage. And he's given authority over all generations. It's all those different peoples, right? They were subjects and nations, whoever they had under their rule. Okay, the, the subjects, the ones that they you know, went out and conquered. Yeah, made them come underneath their boot heel. They were subject to them, and tongues and peoples. 
Put it in the cap. This will error make any motherlands. Okay. Okay, you have fatherlands here, motherlands. So there's other people of other nations that you know other areas that they went and invaded and conquered and put them under their authority. They were subject to them. And he opened his mouth to blaspheme against Allah or God, to blaspheme against his name and his abode and against those who dwell in heaven. And he was given authority over all generations and nations and tongues and people. And he was given authority to do battle with the saints and to defeat them. Okay? To kill off the opposition. Those who believe in Jesus, okay? they believe in God, they believe in Jesus, i.e. the disciples, the apostles, those early Christians, to put it that way, right? Anyone that believed in them, they went under their empirical church, the Roman state Catholic church, okay? It's like you've got to wipe out the opposition, the competition. If you don't come under us, well, we're going to wipe you out, okay? We want to be the mother church. So we will do that. Okay, so seven. Yeah, motherlands. Uh, little Aramaic idiom, be victorious over. Okay, so they conquer them. And he was given authority over all generations and nations and tongues and peoples. And he's given authority to do battle with the saints and to defeat them. And they worshipped him. They paid homage, venerated him. Okay, treated him like a god. All of them who dwelt on earth. Okay, at that time, it's talking about the earth, these geographical locations in the west, etc. That the Romans, the Greeks, etc. had conquered. They gone and invaded. They conquered and made them subject under them. Again, it's not talking about New Zealand or Tonga or Australia, anything like that, right? Unless you can prove the history that the Romans all went down there and made this these people subjects of the Roman Empire. Baloney. Okay. Uh, okay, so and they worshipped him all of them who dwelt on earth, those whose name is not written in the book of life, of the Lamb was who was sacrificed from the foundation of the universe. So this here, verse eight, could mean up to the present day. Okay, those whose name were not written in the book of life. Of the lamb who was sacrificed. Who's it talking about? Ishwa Mashika or Jesus the Christ. Okay, it was prophesied that he would be sacrificed from the very foundations of the universe, the beginning of the creation, even before that, right? Okay, nine. If a human being has ears, then listen. Okay, so it's nothing to do with Hillman's theory. Okay, if a human being takes captives, by captivity he is taken. What you reap to you sow. You get these rewards or consequences, right? You go out there and you take someone else as a captive. Okay. By captivity he's taken, right? So he becomes your servant or your slave. Well, he's basically your slave, right? If a human being kills by the sword, he is destined to be killed. Okay. So basically here it's saying if you go out there and you get yourself some slaves, it may come around that one day you'll be a slave. You'll be in the same situation. Okay, if you kill somebody else with a sword in those days, <laughs> fate is, chances are, you're going to be killed by a sword. He who um, fights with the sword or uses the sword dies by the sword, right? This is the justification for the hope and faithfulness of the saints. Justification, right? Okay, where's that? Uh, team. 15 team. Literal Aramaic idiom. By highway takes. Kind of a weird... Uh, Expression translated <laughs> from the Eastern Galilean Aramaic. Uh, okay, so where are we team? Okay, yeah, this is a justification, meaning that if, if they, as being saints and believers in God and the Christ, they suddenly lose their life for His sake because they believed in whatever, well, then they're going to obtain it, aren't they? Okay, so that's yeah, they, they'll be happy saying, Well, yeah, if we get killed because we believe in the Lord. We believe in God and Jesus. We're willing to die, be martyred for Him, because we know at the end there's this just reward for us, right? And uh, you know, whatever they did to us was gonna, God's gonna, you know, end up doing it to them, <laughs> letting it be done to them, right? Paybacks. 
11. And I, John, saw another demon, that's an inhumane creature, that hates man, anti-man, that rose from the earth, and he had two horns resembling those of a ram, and he spoke as a dragon. Okay, so maybe he's a holy figure, but he's actually of the devil. And all the powers, or the authority of that first demon, he performed before them, and he made the world, and those who dwell in it, so that they would worship that first demon, the one who became healed from under its own death. Okay, so where's that? 12... 11, 12, 13. Okay, where are we here? Okay. Carnivorous creature, that's a man hater, anti man. It had authority and it ruled over all these people. Yeah, around them. You know, they invaded, etc., etc. They became subject to that person, that being. Okay, and he performed grandiose signs, whereas even fire fell down from the sky over the earth before humanity. 13, 13. Boisterous. Okay. Literal Aramaic idiom from below. Is that 13? And he performed grandiose signs. There again, just got a bit lossy. Boisterous. Okay. Whereas even fire fell. Where are we? Came from below. See? Literal Aramaic idiom from below. So it didn't actually come from above, it came from below. Okay. From the sky over the earth and before humanity. And he misleads those who dwell on earth to be the slaves of the image of that demon. Okay, from below. Yeah, thir 13, 14, Aramaic idiom leads to oblivion or perishing. Eternal non-existence. So it's some sort of image that all these subjects under that particular man-hating, <laughs> anti-man person creature okay ah okay so this is this is talking about a state the one who had been struck by the sword and had lived so it's symbolic right so it's this particular city or state that rose again right probably the republic roman republic something like that and it was given to him to impart a spirit to the image so it's as if this image had come alive right a spirit to the image 15 is that 15 15, 15, or idol, okay, with some sort of idol. So that would be those figures, statues of the emperor, say Emperor Constantine, is just an example, or Caesar, that you, when you walk past it, you had to bow down to it, give it homage, venerate it, you know, kiss it, whatever, okay, pay some money, whatever, like that, right? Okay, if you didn't, you got done for it. It's the image of this emperor, okay. That descendant said, oh, he's a god, he's born of the god, he's divine, you must worship him as a god, and all this is crap, right? Okay? And to command that all those who do not worship the image of that demon be killed. Okay? And he enslaved them all, the small and the famous, and the rich and the poor, and the children of the free and the slaves, whereas to be given a mark on their right hands or between their eyes. So a lot of people say, oh, that's the future, and that's the mark of the beast, and all this sort of crap, right? What does it say here? Okay. Literal Aramaic idiom, authorization, certification, stamp, seal, or commission. Okay. On their foreheads. Literal Aramaic idiom, or expression, on their foreheads. Okay, go back up, 13, 16. 13, 16. Okay, and enslaved them so they were all subject to him right both the rich and the poor okay. the famous the unknown the common yeah didn't matter who you were and the rich and the poor and the children of the free and the slaves you're all under him his authority or subjects okay to that empire given a sign a mark a certification on their right hands or between their eyes okay you may be looking at the Roman Catholic sign, you know, sign of the cross, etc., uh, etc., et all that, you know, your communion wafer, etc., um, etc., et whatever you go through in the Roman Catholic Church, 
okay, each Sunday, right? Okay, so you uh, obviously this you belong to them. Okay, you're a loyal subject of them. You're under their church, right? Okay, all these different rites, rituals, and so forth. Okay, so you're not actually of God, right? You're of this particular church, this empirical church. Okay, because if you're a Christian, God knows who are His. Right? He gives them a mark or a sign or a certification. He can see from afar that you belong to him. Okay? You've got the seal of God. Okay? they got a different seal, a different certification. Okay? We were told in a church meeting one night, Tuesday evening, oh, this is symbolizing work, your employment. Yeah? And this is your mind, how you think, what you think, all this sort of stuff, right? Okay? So that no one, not anybody, could sell or buy except he who has the mark of that demon or the number of his name. So that could be in the marketplaces in that particular period. Okay? Jesus' era, John's era, that you couldn't buy, you couldn't sell. Okay? Unless you were a subject, okay? a proven subject of that nation. Okay? And then it says, now get some wisdom. Here is wisdom. Whoever has a mind, who's got a brain, got some intelligence, should calculate or count the number of the of that demon, yeah, the anti-man, that man-hater. Okay, we're not talking about uh, those, you know, dislike men because of their choice. Yeah, etc. We're talking about this being, this particular being. For it is the number of a human being. Yeah. And his number is 666. Yeah, which is, uh, if you use numerology, 6 times 3 is 18, 1 and 8 is 9. Uh, okay, so what's 9? He's a powerful leader, uh, etc., etc. You could look at that that way, but it could be something completely different, right? Okay. Many have their theories. Oh, it's um, Donald Trump. Oh, no, it's uh, uh, somebody, somebody, uh, Leopold or something. Oh, no, no, it's uh, Obama. No, 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 it's. Um, Billy Graham. No, no, you know, they can't make up their damn mind because they're translating it wrong. Okay? Here is the here then is wisdom. Whoever has a brain or intelligence. Let's see something here. Brain. Thirteen eighteen. Literal Aramaic idiom or expression. Brain. Okay, you gotta work out who it is. It's anti man. It hates man. What is the number of a human being? It's a mortal. Okay? Somebody who's probably been given the authority, their power from the devil. Yeah? And you can do wondrous signs and you know, all this sort of stuff. You know, get people on their side, trick them with these visions, all this sort of stuff. Right? But they're really, inwardly, they're corrupt. They're actually run by somebody else behind them. Okay? You have the white pope. They always wear the white, but apparently there's a Black Pope. Not saying he's African American or anything, but he just wears black. He's from a different faction, i.e., supposedly the Jesuits and all this sort of stuff. Jesuit order. Okay? Who's yeah, like the puppet masters? Yeah. They're the, uh, what do they call it? Puppet master or marionette, is it? Controlling, pulling the strings of the puppet. Yeah. Go, go do your research on that. Okay. You ever trust anybody? Go and do your own study research on that establish the facts the facts claimed as facts as established facts go find the evidence prove that evidence is evident through the evidence proving itself evident uh, see if the era uh, the writers authors etc you know these modern books that say oh this is the beast this is this 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 is all this sort of rubbish right okay, you got to figure out got to do the study etc and find out if it's actually true okay that that this information is actually true it's infallible therefore irrefutable uh or prove that these people are that okay they're infallible irrefutable so then that their writings will be proven irrefutable infallible okay you got to do the research you got to do investigative journalism that's what we the ministry of the Real truth are doing okay because we can't help what we're doing right because our friend who was a christian we used to go to this church right 
he meant well, but he kept coming out saying, ooh, ooh, and it had all these deceitful tricks to get us to that church. Oh, we've seen the movie lately. Oh, we've seen it before. Oh, you should come watch it. No, no, you go watch it for us and then come back and tell us. Okay? Oh, 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 we should go up the road and get you some food. Um, I'll buy it. Go up there, you end up in the church. Oh, okay. Where's my order, you know? Okay, or, or, or my friend, he, he's come back from Israel. He knows all that stuff. He's a Jew. He's a Jew. I'll put a car go to his house and see him, right? It happens to be a Sunday. Boom, you end up in the church. Wow, this guy's got a lot of flatmates. Wow, look at his house. It's huge. He's even got a piano. Wow, and a choir. Wow, fantastic. Yeah, tricks like that. You know? He'd go home and he'd ring you up. You know, maybe your friends come over and say, oh, come on, man, get rid of this clown. Right? Oh, he'd better go. You know, they're all upset. He's probably going to beat you up or something. So he goes, oh, yeah, I better go. And he goes home and he rings up, the devil's got you, all this sort of stuff, right? And then we go to somewhere else and they say, oh, we're not like that. We're completely different, you know? But they're exactly the same. So he goes to some other church because they want to know, what's your name? Where do you live? Do you have a job? How much do you get? Who stays in your house? It's like, eh? Is this some sort of survey? <laughs> some, some sort of survey group in your church wanting to know everything about us? Is it the tax department or something? You know? So you go to some other church, you say we go somewhere else, and they say, oh, we're not like that. You know, maybe friends say, well, our church is not like that. And then you go there, they're exactly the same. Right? Go somewhere else, they're exactly the same. Yeah? <laughs> we go to an open uh, church, right? They say, okay, if you're from the Presbyterians, or you're from the Lutherans, or you're from this, or you're from that, you're all right. You know, everybody's welcome, all this sort of stuff, service for everybody. You sit down there, right? Like we did. We're from this other church, Church of Christ in New Zealand, right? Right? We left that because, not because we were disgruntled, but it's just, there are things they wouldn't tell us, okay? And then we found out later on there was an incident where some older elder had <laughs> touched the guy when he was younger, all that sort of stuff, it was on the news or whatever, right? But we'd left that anyway, because, yeah, we uh, just <laughs> couldn't understand why they wouldn't answer our questions and why they're dodgy and all this sort of stuff. So we went to this other one that was supposed to be open, right? Didn't care if you were Lutheran, Presbyterian, Roman Catholic, or whatever. The service was open for everybody. Okay? You get an anointing all that. So we sat down, and this guy asked us. We said, oh, he used to be at Church of Christ. He said, yeah, he, he goes there. And we said, well, we found something. Uh, he says, oh, what's that? We said, oh, the original ancient Aramaic manuscripts translated in the nearest English by a native-born Aramaic-speaking translator from Mesopotamia. And we talked to him with him about it, and then he started getting snotty. Because what we're talking to him about was exposing their Americanized Bible English versions, the English Bible versions, as incorrect. Mark fifteen thirty four, etc. etc. Matthew twenty seven uh, forty six or something like that. Right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's twenty seven forty six. Forty five forty six. Where Christ is on the cross and he, he sees something and it's supposed to mean, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But it doesn't. That second and third transliteration, right? From the Arabic and the Greek. Okay? And they get snotty. They don't want to talk to you anymore, you know, all this sort of stuff. You can tell by the look on their face, the expression that they're, they're all upset, you know, because you're not conforming to what they believe and what they're trying to dictate you, even though that place that you're in, that church, says uh, it's open, church, you know, all uh, Christian denominations, faiths, welcome, etc., etc., come as one to in a congregation to worship the Lord, and then you've got that sort of carry on, right? That's unfortunately how they operate out there. Okay, so we're going to leave it at that. We'd have to talk to it, talk to you about it forever. Okay, so uh, if you like what we've brought to you so far, we could probably brought you, bring you part two, go deeper into it. Well, leave it there, right? So that's what we believe. He's probably talking about Lucifer, the serpent, the beast, right, of Revelation. Okay, no Greek text. There was other stuff that he yeah, seems to be hinting at. Okay. Uh, okay, what do we say before? Uh, what we're meaning is this uh, mixture of opium, myrrh, you know, the natural with the uh, drugs, okay? He's not hinting at that. He's not saying it's that in the Greek. He's saying it's a serpent, it's a beast, or a wild, uncontrollable, dangerous thing, right? Okay? You see the difference? So if you liked it, um, give us a like, subscribe to us, Add your comments below this video and then go share this with all your family, friends and others uh, that we, the Minister of Your Truth, have revealed to an extent what this guy is possibly 
we still got to do more research uh, what he is really like what he's really like what is the real intentions are okay because he keeps saying hail satan uh, and talks about satan and all this sort of crap you right? okay what person of god would be saying hail satan uh satan this that this that whatever right he's obviously not of god so what would he be of he's of the devil isn't he we've just knocked down our pocket and lucky the cat wasn't underneath it but yeah if basically we're saying uh, if you like this video you'll say like sign up uh you know subscribe to us add your comments below and you go share this with everybody else who may be being fooled by this guy's oh yeah i've got this greek text uh this this uh writings from the medical uh physician uh, in the time of nero and uh no one's translated it before you don't even know what a therakia is or theoretic or whatever it is right you don't know that you've never read the bible you don't if you have you don't know what what it is all this is they say you have when you have it well this is rubbish right and blasphemy against christ saying like you know, uh, him and the disciples had a um adult child thing going on and jesus was a drug trafficker and all this rubbish total blasphemy total nonsense okay stick with the scriptures be very wary of these people sneaking in right trying to tell you this is what the bible actually says in the greek i know i'm the only one that knows you know what does that lead to you if you become part of this cult next minute you're drinking the not the uh, what's it called kool-aid yeah you know you're drinking the kool-aid okay so yeah as you said give us a like subscribe to us add your comments below then go share this video with all your family friends and others we hope that you enjoyed it if you did and you want part two well uh, tell us in the uh, comments and we'll work on that for you we've still got other videos etc his book to look at and plenty more